Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about osseous dysplasia. Before this lecture we have studied about the fibrous dysplasia and ossifying fibroma. Today we will discuss about cemento osseous dysplasia also known as osseous dysplasia. Well, it is most commonly present in tooth bearing areas and it is the most common fibro osseous lesion. Okay? Uh, there are many similarities, you know, the pathological features of the fibrous dysplasia and ossifying fibroma and the correct diagnosis can be a problematic thing okay so there are you know many similarities as far as pathological features are concerned of fibrous dysplasia and ossifying fibroma uh, to the cemento osseous dysplasia this is why it will be difficult to diagnose these lesions okay some investigators have suggested that the you know its close proximity with the periodontal tissue and they they think that this is due to uh, the periodontal ligament origin okay and other believes that defect in the extra uh, ligamentary bone remodeling which is due to local factors and hormonal imbalances may give rise to cemento osseous dysplasia okay uh, there are you know three groups uh, as far as the clinical and radiographic features are concerned there are three patterns of cemento osseous dysplasia one is the focal uh, the second one is the periapical and the third one is the florid okay the focal pattern is somewhat different than the periapical and florid type that is it is most common in white and uh, uh, white people and whereas the periapical and florid are more common in black people okay we will discuss about these things so here we have we have the focal cemento osseous dysplasia you know, uh, in the focal osseous, uh, uh, focal cemento osseous dysplasia, single site is most commonly involved. Uh, it is present in 90% of its cases in females, and third to sixth decade of life is, uh, you know, uh, most common. Okay, and higher percentages are present in whites. Whereas the other two, uh, the periapical and florid pattern, are more common in black people. Okay. Uh, it is most common in the posterior mandible okay and mostly it is asymptomatic and can be you know diagnosed on routine radiographic examination so uh, most of the lesions are less than 1.5 centimeter in diameter okay completely they are radiolucent to densely radio opaque when uh, in initially they are you know radiolucent okay radiographically they are radiolucent but with the with the time they get uh, matured and they will be converted into mixed and then will be converted into the radio opaque lesion okay Mo uh, mostly they are mixed radiolucent to radio opaque pattern the borders are slightly irregular okay this feature of uh, uh, you know radiolucency and then getting to the converted into a radio opacity is you know they are, this thing is common in all three form of uh, uh, the cemento osseous dysplasia so a uh, dentulous uh, yes this focal cemento osseous dysplasia is present in dentulous uh, and edentulous areas here you can see uh, the radiolucent area is present at the edentulous area of the first molar and it is also present at the periapical area of the second molar you, you can see this is the radiolucent area and then it gets matured and it is converted into a radio opaque and radiolucent mixed you know uh, lesion okay with the passage of time this radiolucent area gets converted into the mix and then into the radio opaque area okay now we'll discuss about the periapical cemento osseous dysplasia uh, it is most commonly present at the anterior uh, part of the mandible at the periapical region of teeth okay multiple foci are more frequently present it is most common in female okay and 70 percent of cases affect blacks okay so i have uh, mentioned it earlier that the focal uh, cemento osseous dysplasia is most common in whites whereas the periapical uh, and florid type are most common in the black people okay uh, the 30 and 50 years old patients get uh, uh, most commonly periapical cemento osseous dysplasia. Yeah, one uh, very characteristic thing about the periapical cemento osseous dysplasia is uh, the teeth involved are vital and they seldom have restorations. Okay, they are mostly asymptomatic and they are diagnosed on routine radiographic uh, 
examination okay early lesion similar to that of the focal are radiolucent uh, areas present on the apical area of the tooth with the passage of time they will get converted into the mixed lesion and then radio opaque okay these are uh, radiolucent area at the apical area of the tooth so this is difficult to differentiate from periapical granuloma or periapical cysts okay so it will get matured over time to create a mixed radiolucent and radio opaque uh, appearance similar that similar like that of the focal one at the end stage you know there will be circumscribed dense uh, calcification surrounded by a narrow radiolucent rim the most of the lesions are less than one centimeter in diameter and they are self-limiting and does not typically expand the cortex so here we can see the radiolucent areas present uh, at the uh, periapical areas of the teeth in the anterior part of the mandible this is radiolucent areas here here you can see it then it is converted into the mixed lesions over here and then into the mature lesion which is uh, radio opaque with the radiolucent boundaries here you can see okay now we will discuss about the third pattern of cemento osseous dysplasia which is florid cemento osseous dysplasia here you know multifocal involvement is present not limited to the anterior mandible mostly they are present in the posterior portion of the jaws and pre uh, they are predominantly present in the black woman in middle aged to older adults okay so they are mostly present bilaterally and there is symmetrical involvement as far as florid cemento osseous dysplasia is concerned and mostly four posterior quadrants are involved in these lesions okay they are mostly asymptomatic and they are diagnosed on the rot routine radiographic uh, examination and uh, some of the cases may may be there with dull pain okay uh, yes this is one uh, very important feature is that uh, it may show yellowish avascular bone uh, it means that yellowish avascular bone can be present in florid cementosis dysplasia Okay, if we talk about radiographical features, you know, the maturation noted in the other two form. Okay, okay it is similar like that, like that of the focal and the periapical cemento osseous dysplasia. Uh, initially, they are radiolucent with time, they will become mixed and then they will be converted into the radio opaque with only a thin peripheral radiolucent rim. Okay, here you can see a yellowish avascular cementum like material is, uh, you know, beginning to uh, ex exfoliate uh, through the oral you know mucosa and here we can see uh, the radiolucent and radio opaque mixed lesions are present over the uh, peri periapical areas of the teeth here we can see then it gets matured these are the radio opaque areas present over here here with radiolucent rim area over here okay so in the you know uh, as we know about the about you know, the florid cementosis my dysplasia uh, we have studied that uh, it involves uh, you know mostly the four posterior quadrants which we can see over this image you can see one quadrant second third and fourth quadrant okay okay so some cases you know there uh, may be fusion of cementosis material directly uh, on the tooth root surface and it may uh, be similar like hyper -cemento cementosis like appearance will be there okay and uh, uh, here again there ca it can be present in dentulous or edentulous areas they may be single or multiple okay now uh, we will discuss about histopathological features you know uh, all three patterns have similar histopathological features uh, fragments of cellular mesenchymal tissue composed of a spindle shaped fibroblast and collagen fibers with numerous small blood vessels okay uh, the free hemorrhage may be present throughout the lesion. Uh, this is one, you know, characteristic feature of the uh, cemento osseous dysplasia. In ossifying fibroma, the free hemorrhages uh, are present at the periphery, but here, uh, but here in the cemento osseous dysplasia, it will be throughout the lesion. Okay, throughout the lesion, the free hemorrhage may be present throughout the lesion. Okay, within this fibrous connective tissue uh, background, there can be mixture of woven bone, lamellar bone, and cementum-like particles. Okay, uh, lesions when mature, uh, there will be increase the the ratio of um, the uh, fibrous connective tissue to mineralized material decreases. It means the mineralized material will be increased as the lesion gets mature. Okay, uh, in maturation uh, stage, the bone trabeculae become more thick. So that is why they, they will look like more radio opaque. 
So radio radio pack stages, you know, the individual trabeculae fuses with each other. They they become thick and fuses with each other, and there can be lobular masses composed of sheets or fused globules of relatively acellular and disorganized cementaceous material. Okay, here the uh, if we talk about the uh, cementaceous dysplasia. In cementoosseous dysplasia, there will be disorganized cementoosseous material, whereas in fibrous dysplasia, uh, sorry, there in the ossifying fibroma, you know, there will be organized cementoosseous material. Okay. Okay. Diagnosis. The uh, you know uh, diagnosis uh, uh, are based on the radiographic patterns. Black. Uh, if the you know lesion is present more commonly in black female patients, multicordons, then you can diagnose it uh, to be the cementoosseous dysplasia involvement or multiple lesions involving vital lower incisor teeth this is one more clue the teeth which are involved will be you know vital before the final sclerotic stage cementoosseous dysplasia uh, you know they, there will be easily fragmented and gritty tissue that can be curated easily from the defect but does not separate cleanly from adjacent normal bone in contrast to ossifying fibroma tend to separate cleanly okay this cemento osseous uh, uh, dysplasia uh, they they will not uh, you know uh, they will not separate it cleanly whereas in ossifying fibroma they will uh, separate cleanly from the bone and are removed in one or several large masses okay so uh, histo uh, histopathological features can also be you know uh, helpful uh, as far as diagnosis is concerned although cemento osseous dysplasia and ossifying fibro fibroma demonstrate a mixture of bone and cementum like particles the trabeculae in ossifying fibroma tend to be more delicate and often demonstrate osteoblastic rim and they are more you know organized in form whereas in the uh, cemento osseous uh, dysplasia they are a bit disorganized okay cementum like um, particles in cemento osseous dysplasia is irregularly shaped as as i have already mentioned it okay ossifying fibroma uh, yes i have mentioned this point as well the hemorrhage along the margins of the specimen are present in ossifying fibroma whereas in cemento osseous dysplasia the hemorrhage may be present throughout the lesion Okay, now we we'll discuss about the treatment and prognosis. Uh, they generally do not require uh, removal. Uh, if there is significant sclerosis, the lesion of cementoosseous dysplasia tend to be, you know, hypovascular and they are more prone to the necrosis with minimal provocation. So this may be the problem. You know, the bone may be um, prone to necrosis. So asymptomatic patients, you know, uh, we in if the patient is asymptomatic, then we will do regular recall examination and we will advise some good oral hygiene. Okay. Uh, yes, one important thing is that the biopsy or elective extraction of teeth should not should not be uh, indicated or should not be advised. It is contraindicated. Okay. Okay. So uh, it is uh, contraindicated because uh, the reason being. Uh, you know the uh, bone is uh, more prone to necrosis so there are more chances of necrosis of bone okay now if the patient is symptomatic the you know it is a more difficult case uh, uh, to you know uh, to manage at this stage there is inflammatory component to the disease and it may lead to chronic osteomyelitis involving uh, dysplastic bone and cementum you know antibiotics may be indicated but often uh, are not effective so we will do sequestration of the sclerotic cementum like masses uh, occurs slowly and is followed by healing so we will do sequestration uh, of the sclerotic cementum like masses and then we will do the saucerization of dead bone okay uh, the prognosis of uh, cementoosseous dysplasia is good if cysts are present then we will do curettage as well these are the references of uh, this lecture if you have any question regarding cemento osseous dysplasia, I am here to answer all your questions. Please uh, drop your question in the comment box below. If you like my lecture, please subscribe to my channel and I will try my level best to make more lectures on oral pathology. So um, uh, to make it more, you know, enjoying and more easier for you people. Uh, till the next lecture, uh, take care and bye bye.